Canada has some of the most beautiful just pull-off spots. I don't know if this is technically a rest spot or what this is. Picnic table set up, fire pits. Pretty common. We've seen the firewood already cut and ready to go for the fire pits, so just awesome. Oh. Hi, Dad. Hey, girl. I was, I was trying to see. I was trying to say hi to you. Oh, were you trying to say hi to me outside? Uh-huh. Well, I'm here now. Are you saying hi to me now? Hi. <laughs> Love you. Go out. Oh, oh, I gotta go outside? <laughs> Hi, Hensley. <laughs> You're a goober. Uh, traveling style, we've just been, some days we go a couple hours, some days we go five or six hours. Just kind of really depends on what we're doing. We still have not paid for a spot to stay. We've just been pulling over in Walmarts, parking areas. I don't think they have anything called like BLM here necessarily, but I, I know there are some places, because I've seen them on the side of the road, that you can park with your RV that look just like BLM areas here in Canada. Uh, as far as how everything's doing, the Airstream is pretty dirty. We've definitely got a few more dings in our uh, rock shield on the front. That's going to have to be replaced at some point, but that's kind of what it's for. I think it has done better since I put the mud flaps on it. I noticed the water tank was leaking just a tad. I mean, it couldn't have been more than like maybe half a quart for the whole night or something. I don't know if it was even that much. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. I know that's coming. We had some pretty bouncy roads yesterday. So it's just kind of, it's just shaking everything. <laughs> we haven't even got to the worst of it yet. And I don't think I've shown this yet. Our Truma Aquago, we had it installed. The uh, outside cover wasn't done yet. It still wasn't dry, but it's dry. It's on, obviously it's dry and it's done now. <laughs> uh, but this is the outside cover. Um, they got it pretty good. I mean, for painting something and trying to get it to match aluminum, I feel like I did a pretty good job. This unlatches, and that's the inside of our endless water heater right there, in case you're curious on the inside. And this is the, uh, I guess if you had a basic one, this is just your power switch here. But we've got like the comfort model, so we got a couple more modes inside. This is a taco bowl. It's different than tacos. <laughs> Way different. Way different. No, tacos are my love language. It means I love you. <laughs> okay. I'm very love. Hey, she got the corn dog. Taco will do. Well, yeah. Hensley chose that over a taco. She's okay. Well, let's see. So yeah, still, still a full tank of fresh water on the top. We have been using some propane, but I'm gonna guess because we tested this before we even like yeah, left. Uh, most of the propane is being used by the fridge because it's been on gas. Goodness, I don't even know when we filled up. When did we fill up on propane? Like back in Tennessee? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like close to back in Tennessee, we might have stopped at like a Flying J or something. But our comfort model, so far so good. Um, it worked fantastic with full hookups because obviously you get to use as much hot water as you want or until the propane runs out. Endless water heater has been awesome, right? I mean. No, I've loved it. I think it's been a great addition to the, to the RV. I know we've had people with concerns about um, boondocking with this they're like well when you turn it off and on you're going to get this burst of cold water every time like truthfully we got more of a burst i think with cold water like with our other water heater i mean it's it's at least as good if not better boondocking than our other one and it's sipping the propane so you got to think but a six gallon water heater um, it's constantly keeping that six gallons hot this one is keeping like a third of a gallon hot all the time so it barely has to use any propane and then only kicks in on the propane when it needs it when you're taking a shower or when you need hot water which totally makes sense. So our first casualty, we'll have many more. A right hinge on this broke. I did kind of piece it back together, <laughs> but I can't believe that broke. Uh, so it broke right here. Any hope of finding this foldable bracket locally, I'm gonna guess they're slim to none. So I've got to order that to replace those. We don't have a clue when we're gonna be somewhere where we can receive mail. Things are bouncing around pretty good in here. <laughs> and stuff like this can happen. But so far, nothing major as far as like uh, tires going out, cracked windshields. Well, our windshield's already cracked, so I don't really care. No broken axles. We're about to get into the good stuff. We've noticed, which there's no Chick-fil-A's in Canada, right? There's it's one, there's sad, one in Calgary. Sad day. Yeah, there's not many. We are gonna Cal be missing our Chick-fil-A. So there's technically one in Calgary, but it's like in the airport. So we didn't think that would be work. <laughs> Such but. a trick. I thought we were gonna get one in Calgary. It's gonna be months before we have a Chick-fil-A. Yeah, it'll be all right. So we have found that a lot of the McDonald's have play places in Canada, way more than 
in the States. She's excited. A play place for her and hopefully some internet for us so <laughs> we can kill two birds yes. with one stone. So in less junk, more journey fashion, of course, it is raining. We're gonna try to take a picture by the Alaskan highway sign. I know for me, it's the moment I've been excited about because it's kind of that symbolizing that we're about to hit the Alaskan highway and we've made it that far. Yes. We still got a long way to go, but. We're over halfway there, so <laughs> yeah. that's exciting. So the rain has probably helped as far as there not being a crowd out here. So <laughs> Try to get this set up and get this done. Let's see. I think we're pretty good. Pretty good? You need me to pull up a little bit or is yeah, that pretty I need good? You to pull up a little bit. Alright, uh, just a minute. <laughs> The Peace River Bridge is the only existing timber bridge still in use along the Alaskan Highway. It's really cool because you get all this stuff in the mile post. So we've made it to Fort St. John in British Columbia, still working our way north. Um, and we've had a patron reach out to us and offer to give us not just water and electric, but like full hookups. So we have and, full and hookups? We have full hookups, yeah, and Wi Fi and laundry. Oh. <laughs> so pretty good, pretty incredible. It was right on our route. And we love, love, love meeting patrons, but uh, we also. We love, love full hookups. We love hookups too. Yeah. I didn't even know that we were getting full hookups. I just thought we were coming to meet them. So that's awesome. But one thing we've got for Alaska that we haven't used on anything else uh, is the Milepost book. So I highly recommend getting that. This is like um, essential. This was like yeah, the really, first thing we had. Mm -hmm. It was actually given to us for, by some people we ran into that went in 2017. And we thought, eh. Not much yeah, probably yeah, hadn't yeah, changed since much. 2017. Places to stop and how much things are and what to watch out for and just... I mean, it is broke down to every single stop. Yeah, I mean, you're looking awesome. at campgrounds, stuff off the road, different routes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there are tons of routes in here. And I'm still learning the verbiage when people talk about certain highways and areas. Yeah. And so that's all really confusing and overwhelming. So this book has really been helpful and kind of giving us a play by play as we go through. And we're very digital, but mm -hmm. on this route and in this kind of trip, there's a lot of the time you do not have any internet or anything sometimes. Yeah. And so having something like this, Marissa's definitely been digging into this because- We're throwing it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably the thing we use the most when it comes to planning our travels and actually navigating is Google Maps without a doubt. We don't use an RV GPS because our height is so short on our Airstream. We don't worry about overpasses and stuff like that anymore. So we use mymaps.google.com and uh, Marissa gets on there. She marks down everything she wants to see and then I come back and try to make sense of it all <laughs> and uh, create a route out of that. So this is our current attempt at a route. Basically heading toward Fairbanks and then we're gonna be going west and doing the triangle up there and then heading back and zigzagging off of that and hitting a few things. So that's in general the route that we've chosen that'll work for mm -hmm. us and then spend the as far as Banff and Jasper and some of that stuff hit that on the way back more than just a drive through. Because the season in Banff and Jasper and some of the things in Canada, that season's going to be longer than your season in yeah. Alaska. So that's where we're wanting to spend a majority of our time because it is such a drive up there. So hightail it north, take our time coming down. Mm -hmm. And then even worst case, if we didn't get to Banff, Jasper, Calgary, some of that area, um, that's way more doable to hop over the border and do those in the future <laughs> than to swing by Fairbanks. <laughs> so, so that's what we're thinking. And we also show all our travel maps mm -hmm. on Patreon as well. So if you want to see our detailed maps, that's where we put them. Yeah. Well, we've had a pretty good day driving. 
Um, we're pretty tired. It's going to be good <laughs> to relax a little bit with some full hookups. So we're going to enjoy that. And we will catch you guys later. You got to stretch it out. That's that was the a secret. Crazy nap. Stretch it out. She's so sleepy. Oh, you still got glitter in your hair.